Good day, everybody. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. Hope you're all having a very good Memorial Day weekend here. We have Tropical Storm Agatha on its way to becoming Hurricane Agatha. It will become pretty strong here. I think a Category 2 hurricane, just shy of a Category 3. Uh, however, the South Mexican coast here is in its crosshairs over the next 24 to 48 hours. And it will begin to intensify pretty rapidly on uh, Saturday night into Sunday here as we approach that Category 2 mark. 110, 105 mile per hour winds just right at landfall. And then heading inland Tuesday uh, morning. By Tuesday morning, it'll be a tropical storm well inland. And then, of course, Wednesday, we continue to push this towards the southern Gulf of Mexico. Let's break all the details down, see what the models are showing, and what are the chances of this actually becoming a tropical storm Alex in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's take a look. All right, so just a, the point here is 25% chance of development. This is between Tuesday and Thursday of next week. So essentially what we have going on here is tropical storm Saturday evening all the way up to hurricane by about the time of Sunday afternoon, evening, and then into Monday afternoon. Monday evening and night is when it makes landfall. And then we go right up through here into Monday into Tuesday, tropical storm, and then a reemergence. So we'll have to see where this goes. All persons in the Gulf of Mexico should be keeping an eye on this system, whether it would become Alex, how much is left of a low-level circulation will remain to be seen, but a lot to watch here. All right, here's the GFS. There's Agatha over there, lower left-hand corner. Continues to push to the northeast on your Monday here, Sunday into Monday. There it is, making landfall late. Monday afternoon, early evening, right along the Mexican coastline here, becoming a big rainfall maker. And watch this. As it pushes inland, you almost have two areas of low pressure trying to form here. Now, as we continue throughout next week, Thursday, this wants to develop. There's another low. This is interesting. Another low. And then here's a third low. So this is going to be a complex system. Potentially, it's having a hard time figuring out uh, how much energy is going to be left of the system, whether there's going to be a low-level circulation, it's going to be an upper-level low, what's going to be happening with this. But this is definitely interesting, and we want to watch this because the GFS has been tending to want to take a secondary low towards the northeast, towards South Florida, towards next week on June 4th. And look at it, it continues to hold back a primary low back here across the southern Gulf of Mexico. So yeah, taking a look at the HWRF hurricane model here. Uh, if we put this into motion throughout the day, uh, Sunday into Monday, this low, this uh, model has the uh, low as low as, there it is, 951, 950, 948. There it is. It's approaching the Mexican coastline. you got a lot of bays and in inlets here, too, where the water can be funneled uh, to the northeast here. And as you can see, take a look at this. We continue to pull this to the northeast. Look at that. Wow. That's a pretty significant hurricane here coming into all of this region. A uh, tremendous amount of moisture moving inland. You know, by this point, it's going to be, you know, once it moves inland like this, uh, Tuesday into Wednesday, see how it moves inland. It's going to become a massive rain producer. You have those feeder bands moving in on the east side of this hurricane. And as you can see, we go into the day on Tuesday and into Wednesday. This reemerges here out into the Gulf of Mexico. This is the southern Gulf. And you see it still has a low-level circulation here, 1,003 millibars. So as we continue to move this to the northeast, what the uh, HWRF initially does, and then more towards the north, and then potentially the northwest here. So this model wants to move it in the direction here of the western Gulf of Mexico and Texas is right up to the northwest off the northwest corner of your screen here. So if we take a look at the HWRF hurricane model here, take a look at this. We continue to move it towards the coastline here and there it is, 948, 955 millibars there Monday into Tuesday. So there you go that moves it into the Gulf of Mexico ever so slightly. And this model, this hurricane model, is also wanting to bring it up into the western Gulf of Mexico. So all of you that were saying that, oh, it's all about Florida, not necessarily here. The hurricane models are wanting to take this more towards this direction. Uh, their steering currents at this point are going to be rather weak here once this reemerges into the Gulf. All right, so the Euro, we're taking a look at here. We're going to get out to 
Let's see, next week. So, yeah, I don't see the Euro. I mean, the Euro is hinting at showers and thunderstorm action here in the southern Gulf. Um, but I don't see a low-level circuit. Well, there we go. So, yeah, the Euro is probably the furthest east out of these, with uh, bringing the system much slower and much further east. Let's see uh, what it does to it next weekend here. So you can see it makes it kind of a rainmaker here across Florida. It's a broad area of low pressure, so it'll be interesting to see if this, uh, you know, if the Euro does pan out here, if this be becomes a more of a broad uh uh, subtropical low pressure system here so you know this if you know euro is further east gfs and the hurricane models are much uh, further west into the western gulf uh, with this system there's the visible satellite view very beautiful here you can see look at those thunderstorms firing near the center here the system's really got a lot going for it it does have a narrow window of opportunity before it makes it up to the coastline where it'll probably make landfall somewhere right around the south where the coastline bends right in this direction here um, so it's going to bring a lot of storm surge wind and look at this you're starting to see the outflow look at this and then you got the inflows here this system's going to really go through a transformation over the next 24 to 36 hours so taking a look at the atlantic gulf of mexico caribbean here what does whatever's left of agatha here by this point if it does become alex what does it have to work with it does have a lot going for it here in the gulf We're running about uh, three quarters of a degree Celsius above average, all the way up to about 1.6, 1.7. So if it were to emerge right into the western Gulf of Mexico here, it has a lot to work with. Look at off the U.S. East Coast here, however. That is a lot of warming taking place there. And then into the Caribbean here, you've had some waves that have stirred up the water a bit. So a little bit cooler, but that will warm up in time. All right, so the infrared loop, there's Agatha. Look at all that moisture across Central America and Cuba, for that matter. But here's the deal. So you have this stalled out frontal boundary. This is slowly going to wash out. You have the next system across North America here. For the time being, things are pretty clear across the eastern and central Caribbean here. There's the intertropical convergence zone remaining very far to the south. But for the most part, we do have that upper level low out here of the Azores. A lot of wind shear. Probably not going to develop anything out of this at this point. But the central Atlantic is pretty clear at this point. So let's see it, what's at work here with the whole pattern. So there you have it. There is Agatha off the Mexican coast. You know, this is by Sunday, early Sunday morning. So we continue to progress this into motion. So what we have here, the high pressure at this week is actually further west in the Atlantic. So you have this intertropical convergence zone staying pretty far to the south. This is perfectly normal for this time of year. You do have some disturbances here in the western Caribbean. Also in the part of just south of Florida here. But for the most part, you know, the tropics are remaining pretty benign out here. We do have this circulation around the Azores that could develop into something subtropical if this hangs around. It's going to kind of dance around the Azor Islands here. So as we go in time, there's going to be definitely a direct tropical connection here flowing into the Gulf of Mexico. So by this point, we're into Wednesday. Wednesday morning, so we have all this tropical moisture, and we'll be watching if this low-level circulation with Agatha makes it over the entire Mexican terrain here. So, to the north, you can see we have this trough kicking in, this next frontal boundary. This is Wednesday morning. So, as we continue to head throughout the day on Wednesday and into Thursday, so, yeah, there's a couple low-level centers, one right here, there's another one right here that the GFS is kind of having a hard time figuring out which one it could potentially win out here. We also have some sort of disturbance here off the eastern Florida coastline by this point. High pressure building in across the central part of North America. And this front is kind of washing out. So at this point, this may not be much of a factor because these fronts that tend to wash out before they make it to the Gulf Coast tend to don't... They don't bring a lot of steering currents with them. And that's why I think steering currents here in the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean will be getting rather weak by Thursday. I do think that a lot of the wind shear by this point, too, will be slackening off a bit here um, from what it is now, which is a lot higher. So as we continue to put this into motion, the GFS, it's interesting because it did take one component here westward. But you can also see it kind of spins this low off into the Florida 
Keys and into South Florida by next weekend. Well, this is pretty far out, so a lot can change between now and then. But you have this high pressure that continues to slowly retreat eastward, which would allow some of these systems to move up a little bit further to the east here. And if any of them are going to move out of the Pacific, they might have a tendency to meander. And some of the hurricane models taking it up towards Texas and eastern coastline of Mexico here. So there's a lot can happen between now and then. The steering currents, I caution you, are going to become very weak here in the Gulf in the coming days over the coming week. All right, so taking a look at continental-wise here as we put this into motion throughout your rest of your weekend here, here's that ridge of high pressure we're going to be dealing with here. So the trough kicking into the west here, there is Agatha down there. So let's see what happens with this in time here. So we continue to ridge it back east. Wow, that is a very strong ridge. And by this point, there's Agatha. And here is that ridge continuing to the east here. So, that trough slowly kicking out of the west here. Let's see what happens. The trough stays very stubborn. Heights remain below average here across the Gulf and off the U.S. east coast. Ridge of high pressure. Ridging continues across the east. So, yeah, as you can see, steering currents. This keeps it down here pretty... Pretty long time. This is Friday, June 3rd. So, you know, going throughout time here, we finally start to see a little bit of a trough here across the upper Great Lakes, but there really isn't any troughs dropping down to kick whatever's left of Agatha out of here. So we could be looking with the remnants of Agatha or whatever forms, whether it's Alex or a subtropical storm. Yeah, we could be looking at this for quite some time. All right, so we're looking at the rainfall totals out of this. Now, keep in mind, these are actually in millimeters because we're using the Mexican uh, part of the model here. So to put it this in perspective here, see these darker oranges here going right into these extreme southern Mexican coastline here? These are on the order of 300 millimeters of rainfall. So this is approaching 11 inches to one foot of rain. So, and as you can see, as the model continues to pick up this going into the southern gulf, a lot of rain starts to develop with this low-level circulation that it's depicting emerges into the Gulf of Mexico. And here we go, taking a look at Robert oh, cruising along the road. He's on his way to Texas. This is going through I-57 in Illinois. Take a look at that. Beautiful cumulus clouds there off in the distance and just a nice dry road. Look at that weather. Nice travels there Robert good luck in your travels there to hot Texas all right taking a look at John sending in his photo this past Thursday a 62 Huddersfield 68 sunny degrees look at that beautiful blue skies there crew just cruising along the road the roadways at this point so nice capture there John let's see and is the euro pretty much similar it is for the most part at least for the first part of the forecast period there's that low ejecting out of the plains you're going to have some severe weather into parts of the central northern plains here look at this there's that snow across parts of the central northern rocky mountains but for this part high pressures controlling the rest of your memorial day across much of the east heat and humidity will be rising out of the gulf of mexico here as we head throughout time take a look at this there's that low bombing across the northern plains going to be a big problem with potential flash flooding to the north and west and severe thunderstorms on the east end of this system so as we head throughout time here the euro maintains high pressure here across the southeast and off the southeast east coast so this is going to be interesting to see the flow pattern what this does with what is left with Agatha as it reemerges out into the Gulf by this point. Um, we're going to be dealing with complexes of showers and thunderstorms. Some of these could be strong. There it is by Wednesday. The Euro's picking up on some strong thunderstorms here across parts of the Northeast, Ohio, and then into parts of Illinois, Indiana, and then out into Kansas and Oklahoma here. So Wednesday's going to be a big severe weather day. That front slowly washes out, though, into Thursday. And the high pressure continues to be a blocking mechanism here. Steering currents, there's that system that could potentially become something if this persists, you know. But uh, we'll have to see. This is pretty far out. But as I said, the forecast is going to get pretty complicated in time into the Gulf of Mexico here. All right, taking a look at the severe weather outlook. Yeah, I'm going to show you these on the surface maps. It's going to look pretty interesting here. 
It's not something you want on Memorial Day, but enhanced risk here just west of Minneapolis, St. Paul, down and through parts of Nebraska, southeastern part of South Dakota. So, And we'll just have some garden variety thunderstorms down here into the southeast, but as the tornado threat, yeah, it's going to be running pretty high across Minnesota, parts of the Dakotas into Nebraska here. So if we get down into Memorial Day itself, it doesn't move much. Unfortunately, it's probably just slightly to the east at this point, but enhanced risk continuing across Minnesota, Iowa at this point, down and through Kansas. Not good news here. Tornado threats running pretty high. And as we continue throughout the week, yep, we're going to, towards Tuesday, the central and southern plains, as this front starts to wash out, you can see uh, by day five, six, and seven, it is too low to put anything on the map. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. The rest of your Memorial Day weekend is looking nice. We're going to get into the 80s on Sunday after a cool start in the upper 40s. But look at this Memorial Day, hot as a firecracker, 92 degrees and 94 for Tuesday. So we're going to start off with some nice sunny skies, but we're going to transition to scattered showers and thunderstorms Wednesday. Some of these could contain damaging wind, large hail, particularly between 3 and 10 p.m., on Wednesday into the evening and Thursday that cold front blasts through earlier in the morning temperatures will be on the fall 79 degrees but really nice pops and scattered showers especially in the morning as always I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of weather Easter don't forget to hop on over to my social media pages Facebook media mark also weather northeastern also hurricane northeastern and also you can also visit me at mediamark.com weather northeastern.com head over to twitter at weather eastern there is a link to my 2022 hurricane outlook in the description down below if you haven't already viewed that thank you for joining me